1994, new digital-based phone networks were being built. This is a very early 2G phone from that period. I'll be exploring some interesting technical quirks of what this early digital phone was like. This is an Ericsson GH337, released in 1994. It uses the GSM network standard, which began operation only a couple of years prior. GSM was so complex at the time, compared to other telephone network technologies, that some people initially thought it impossible to make small GSM phones. Yet Ericsson achieved this goal early on, showing other companies, such as Motorola, who didn't think it was possible, how a small GSM phone could be made. Let's have a quick look at some of the functions. Turning this phone on, we see the display is tiny. Let's have a quick look at the menus. So we've got a phone book, mail, key lock, a clock, settings, access, networks, divert, info. And that's it. If we go into the info menu, Oh, international number. So you can dial an international number using that function. If we go to the info menu and go into it, it tells us the battery voltage. Battery voltage is a function you're more likely to see in something that's like a prototype. One of the things these new digital networks brought was the possibility of text messaging, which in this phone, that function is in the mail menu. But when we go to the mail menu, the first item we see is voicemail because this was at a time when voicemail was seen as more important than text messaging we have to keep scrolling we find read messages card messages for messages stored on the sim card missed calls set voicemail number cell info display and that's it notice there is no send message option this phone had no ability to send text messages that's partly because with early digital phone networks, the benefits of texting were simply not understood. While some brands and models were including the ability to send text messages, not all phone networks themselves had the ability to accept them. Instead, in the early 1990s, this new SMS technology was offered to customers modelled on pager systems. Someone would call an answering service, the operator would listen to you say the message and then they would type it into their keyboard and send it to you as a pager style message on your phone. This type of service didn't last very long and disappeared alongside pagers themselves. Time for a teardown. Take the battery off and have a look at the label on the back. So we can see there's a date code. This phone was manufactured 1996, week 7. And if we see the battery, it has four terminals that connect to four screws. Another two down the bottom. So we'll start by taking these out. Because power goes through these screws, they have to be insulated from the metal frame. Let's get them all out. So these have loose thread problems down the bottom because the thread has come out of the plastic okay there we go those four screws are out now we do have to remove these so I have a slotted screwdriver for these ones and they are also insulated. So we have the keyboard and display area there. There's one more screw up the top here to remove. Okay, that should come out now. Yep, it is. So there's that metal frame that it sits in, which also provides shielding for the internals of the phone. And the board itself is quite a thick sandwich style board. So there's a couple of boards sitting there. So 
the back of the front board has no components on it except for the microphone connector down the bottom and there's the interboard connector so it's it's quite an interesting design because the front board also provides shielding as does the rear casing for the main components in between the two boards we have it's a soft rubbery conductive material which grounds the two boards together there's another date code on the back of this board and this one's 1995 week 23 so this user interface board was manufactured before the rest of the phone there's the display we've got a a chip on glass display with there's the display connector there's the ringer and there's a battery there I presume that's to keep the clock going there's the indicator LEDs moving on to the main board section now let's have a look at this let's have a look at the main board close up these are the largest chips on the board there's a custom Ericsson chip so there we have the Intel flash to store the program memory it's probably one megabyte or less of flash storage there's some sort of Texas Instruments chip I'm not sure what that is it's fairly close to the board connector going to the front board for the display and keypad and audio. I'm going to take a guess that this chip is related to driving the front board. Uh, this looks like a, a RAM chip. Certainly a lot of bus lines connecting to this main chip. That's the bottom half of the board. We can see the board is very much split into two halves with the top section here. And this looks like a lot of analog stuff. We've got uh, a lot of inductors. There's a Philips IC there. There's another one here. So that's going to be for a lot of the radio frequency circuitry. If we turn the board over, can very much see a lot of radio frequency circuitry here there's that date code again 1996 week 7 some crystals and ceramic packages there's a can there can't quite see what's under it I might lift this sticker away see what's under here quite nice packages there so this large thing here looks like it handles a lot of power and then goes out to the antenna that's going to be for power amplification of the radio signal to transmit there's a couple of round yellow stickers here okay under there we have some metal topped ceramic package of some sort so move to the bottom half of the board again the other side of the main logic area and this I see has a lot of passives around it this could be power distribution whereas this one here seems to have a lot of bus lines running to it there's the very 90s sim card holder so I'm not really able to identify a discrete CPU it may well be that this custom chip that Ericsson have built contains a lot of digital signal processing and the central processing unit from what I understand, these phones do run a Z80 based CPU, which is 
the same style of CPU that runs on the Game Boy. The internal design of this phone certainly does match the external design in terms of it's just built to be really functional with nothing left over. It's really an efficient style of design. Everything has its place, everything goes together, there's nothing extra that's not needed. It's got a very utilitarian look, almost militaristic in its styling. Okay, the phone's all back together. I'm now going to mess around with the software in the phone. And to do that, I'm going to use an Android tablet. To interface the phone, I'll be using a micro USB to USB type A adapter so that I can access USB on the go. And to connect to the phone, I'll be using a serial to TTL interface. There's more details about this in the previous Ericsson video. So we can just plug that straight in to the tablet and it lights up. And on the tablet we've got a serial terminal program that's connected and has detected this adapter into the phone it goes. Okay. Right, now I want to set first of all the board rate. In this case I'm going to make it 115,200 just so I can check debug mode make sure that everything is connected and working. Okay, that's set. Now we'll connect to the phone. Looks good. Alright, when we power up we should get lots of debug messages scrolling on the screen. Yep, there it goes, so that's working. Okay, let's power off. There's the power off sequence and then stop. Okay, with that all working, we know we've got a good connection to the phone. So time to put it into service mode. So to do that, we need to go back to 9600 board. Then when we power on the phone, it will send two greater than symbols. And we have to respond within one second with the character sequence TP1 carriage return. If everything goes fine, we'll get an OK prompt. Alright, so let's do that. Let's go back to settings. 9600. Because I can't type TB1 fast enough within one second, I have added it to this macro button here. So it should just be a matter of powering on the phone and then pressing the button as soon as we get the symbols. There they are. Okay, done. We're in the test program. I want to have a quick check. I want to do PROG1 to see what the test program product date info is. Okay, so we type PROG1. And 9508.11 for the test program. Now if we have a look at the display itself, we can see that it's telling us that it's in the test program. The backlight doesn't come on in this mode. I just sort of have to hold it so that there's enough light to see the screen. And if I scroll through, it says, Greetings, how are you? Thank you for using this MS or mobile station. It's probably the friendliest service program I've ever seen. Read checksum, flash at 11, 15, 200, generate tone. Hmm. So when I do that, it says mic OK, Ord M OK. All right, let's have a look at some more of the commands that we've got. Uh, so we also have ADCR, which is read the analog to digital converter and can change the board rate and we can read as much of the EEPROM as we want or write to the EEPROM flash arrays uh, so IO read, IO write, so these must be for reading and writing to the IO ports 
that's kind of interesting. I wonder if I write to some of the IO ports I can control things like the display. So pre program read, so that reads the contents of the program flash. And a command that displays information. And here's more for reading the program memory. So you know, interesting commands, but not a lot you can do. Though there is a there is one command I'm keen to try. So we write to the EEPROM and we write to address 047A and we write a 1 into it and that enables the built-in calculator. So it seems later versions of software for this model included a calculator in the software, but it was never activated. I can have a look at the version that we're running in this phone. Vers and then we type 0 vers ok, well that didn't tell me anything vers 1 that's meant to tell me the software version that's running in the phone alright, well maybe we'll try prog d Okay, so we're running version 951025, and that should be late enough to have the calculator function in the phone. Okay, so let's enter the command. Electronic EEPROM write to address 047A, and we put a 1 into it. Okay, that wrote OK. Okay, let's see what we've got. Go through the menus. Yep, there's the calculator. All right, uh, one. There's divide, divided by nine. equals that looks pretty good okay there we go there's the hidden inbuilt calculator enabled that was the GH337 Ericsson continued to make this phone until 1998 it was in production for four years this was a very popular phone halfway through in 1996 Ericsson did announce that they were considering a firmware upgrade to add the SMS send option Instead, they decided to release an updated model, the GH388, which included the ability to send SMS and already had the calculator function available. Though the GH337 was so popular, it continued to sell well alongside the GH388 for another two years. I hope you enjoyed this brief look into a very early GSM digital phone.